Welcome to Coco Gets Her Parts Cleaned, which is part three of Coco Goes to the Spa series here on AndyTube. I'm glad you tuned in. I'm getting ready to clean the parts that I took off of Coco. Um, I thought about breaking out my ultrasonic, but I don't have that many parts. If I had pulled the, the bars and some of the shafts and, and more parts, I, it, I probably would have done it. But I know a lot of people don't have an ultrasonic. Uh, if you do, I have made videos about that. And there's a lot of videos on YouTube about cleaning parts with ultrasonic. So I'm just going to go back to my old-fashioned method, method that I used for years um, to, to clean the parts. I have plenty of the 25% uh, solution of crud cutter left from cleaning cocoa. And I'm going to be using that. should be strong enough. And I always start with the bed plate. Uh, always. That's the first thing I clean. And this one's pretty good. Um, you know, they, they can be real nasty. And I know a lot of people will sell you, like what they call a felt and that's what it is to me it's a felt this is more of some kind of fiber board and I like it better so if I can save it and clean it up and get the old rank smell out of it I do um, don't don't rub or brush this very hard especially when it's wet because it will it will you know it's a fiber and it'll start coming apart if it's real if it's real uh, linty and you want to you know, like brush it off with your lint brush before you get it wet. That's great. That's no problem. Now I usually get most of it. You might get your brush a little greasy. Now I've got a little tiny piece here of kind of a dried up grease that's dripped down here. And you could have a lot of this. And what I do before I get it wet is I try and take something... Uh, you know wood or plastic or even metal, but just flat don't don't gouge it and just kind of flatly Try and pick up. Oh, this is coming up good Try and pick up as much of you as you can of it Because once you spray the crud cutter on it, it'll start kind of dissolving down into the the fiber liner so that, that came off real easy. And I, I have sometimes gotten this wet first, but then I realize I'm just diluting the crud cutter. So I give it a good spray of the crud cutter and put it in the, the sink next door here and let it sit for a while while I come back and do some of this other work. So let's just... Uh, Get it down in here and give it a give it a good spray. I, I wanted to show you spraying it, but I, I really should keep it flat here so it so that it sinks in. And uh, I one time uh, my cheap dollar spray bottle had broken. <laughs> And I didn't have this nice $6 one from Home Depot. And uh, I just took the cut cutter and poured some in a plastic cup. And I was taking my lint brush and dipping it in the crud cutter and sloshing it on. And you could use a foam brush too. Just don't apply much pressure on it. Now one thing that you, you'll probably see right away... You see how this is lifting up here? So it's going to warp on you. And don't worry about it. Don't worry about pushing it back down right now or anything else. Because when we're, when we're done washing it, we're going to let it air dry. And it will dry totally flat. So don't, so don't worry if you start seeing it come up like that. Okay. I don't know if this will show up here. But just from spraying it a little bit. Maybe you can, oops, whoop. There you can you can see what's coming out of it already just for that. 
So I soak it pretty, pretty darn good. And you can use a stronger solution on this if you want. Uh, I did notice one time on one machine I did, I, I don't remember which one, but where this is more of a charcoal gray or black, it was more of a dark brown. And I used a, a like 80% solution on it, and it did lighten the brown color a little bit. And, and I, I don't think that was all taking the oil out. Look at that. See, so why would you want that smell in your work area? And, you know, when it warms up, too, it gets more noticeable. So why not get all these years of all this stuff out? So I'm going to set that over on the other sink flat as I can so it can soak in. And uh, have my goggles on again because I'm using a spray. And... Uh, Remember, you can use nitro or vinyl or latex gloves to protect your hand if you want. And uh, the next thing I work on are like the covers and the hand wheel. Let's see if I can back out here. There we go. So this hand wheel is pretty good. You see here, I'm... Let me get my little stick here. I've got some grease. Some people like to put grease on the on the end of that arm shaft when they put this on. So I'm going to kind of clean that out. And what's funny is the back has some very hard... Uh, back here between the, the metal. Now this is where the bobbin tire rides on the paint. This slips inside the body and then there's some spacers and springs and this is the of course the texto light gear okay but you can see that uh, oil got down in here and there shouldn't be any oil really on a on a gear and it's it's hardened up real nice so that's why you don't want to use three in one oil household oils uh, motor oils uh, the oils like that because they have additives but you know as the oil gets thrown off and dries and dissipates all the additives just stick to everything like crazy and it's all it's really all mucked up down in here so not so much on the front paint yet but on the back side I'm gonna give that a good spray and let the chemicals do the work a lot of the work for me okay and then on these, I like to, matter of fact, I'm going to move that hand wheel over by the bed plate. Uh, on the cover <coughs> and stuff, the, the dirt and grease comes off really easy. So I don't like to leave the crud cutter on there uh, very long. So I, I just uh, spray, put them down in the sink. And I start with the insides, because that seems to be what, what traps the... The grease and smell more and I'm going to give them a light spray then I'm going to flip them over and give them a light spray on the paint side and then uh, I'm I, oops I forgot my sponge oh good good there's an old one here if I see something really bad I'll wipe it with the sponge while the crud cutters on there but then I'm going to rinse them real quick and they'll be done so let me just start with the inside here. Be sure this uh, screw that holds the magnifying the light lens is, is tight before you move this around much because it can get vibrated loose and pop out. So I'll spray the inside of that. And I'll spray the inside of that. And I'm just going to flip it over. And spray the outside lightly, and I'll get I'm gonna flip up. get down around the hinges a little bit, and I'll spray the outside and the screw holes of the light lamp shade, and then I'll spray off the front of the nose plate. 
and I don't I don't really see anything going on here um, that's going to require me of scrubbing or rubbing I did bring my tooth well maybe these little screw holes I can see some muck down in there mm -hmm. just to get make sure that I'm going to get that clean but I want to go ahead and start rinsing this right away now <clears throat> and you want to rinse the chemical off you want to rinse all the cleaner off very good, of course, you know, I don't have to tell you that. Now, a quick inspection, I see a little, I see one little grease ball caught in the hinge down here that I missed. So I'm going to give it a squirt, there it goes, okay. Get that rinsed off. Then I'm going to put them back over here on the towel I set up and let them start drip drying. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these um, and then I'll come back. Okay, nice and clean. Start them drying. I'm going to take a, a better look now at this hand wheel and I see that the um, varnish grease is starting to come off but it's still still a lot of grease and oil at the back of that gear and I kind of forgot to spray inside here so I'm going to spray it down again and I'm going to give it a scrub with the soft brush and the uh, sponge I want to see, I don't like to use the metal brushes on this unless I really have to get down in there bad. But it's, it's going, it's clean and I can see now down to the metal behind the gear in here. So it's cleaning that stuff that's been trapped in there for who knows how long. There's a little stubborn one right there, a little more elbow grease. Okay, let me go in here and start. I should have brought my bottle brush, huh? I forgot that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more to this filming and editing than, than I realized when I first started this. That takes more than just doing the work. <laughs> okay, let's go over the Textilite gear. Teeth. They're really, really looking good now. Around that snap spring. Mm -hmm. Look down inside there. Looks good. So time to rinse. Put that out to dry, drip dry. While I got the water running, I'm going to do my, well, let me, let me slow it down a little. I'm going to do my first rinse of the bed plate, the drip pan. I see a lot of muck coming out of there. That's good. I like to go around that and uh, raised area because it can get the, you know, and like where that's come up, I go ahead and use that as a, like a little rinse spot to try and uh, get water under that. I think one time I had part of it kind of flop up. So after it dried, I gently lifted that corner and I put a couple dabs of just rubber cement and pressed it down and it worked great. So if it does get loose on you, don't, don't panic. 
Now, if things start showing up, more lint and stuff, you know, be real gentle if you think you have to take it off. I really don't worry about it. A little lint, it's going to get more lint over the years, but you, you know how to maintain it and just brush it off occasionally. So I'm much more concerned about getting the old oil and grease out of there. So I'm going to do it a second time now. And of course it won't soak it up as much because it's saturated with water. But I'm going to put that back in there. And I'm going to take a look at these small parts now. Um, when I have big groups of small parts, what I'll do is, is put them in a, a cheap uh, strainer that I bought. And I group them by like maybe um, the slide plate, needle plate, bobbin holder, a positioning spring, kind of everything around the bobbin area. And I'll do those. And then I'll do all the needle bar parts. And then I'll do all the presser bar parts and, and things like that. That way I don't get screws uh, mixed up. And uh, it's not that critical for me anymore. But I still keep them separate because it just saves me uh, time, you know. But uh, even though I've only got a couple, usually a good spray and uh, stuff. Let's see, I don't know if that's going to... I think you can see in the sink there how the muck dripped off. And then if you have... A built up grease and you just want to speed up the process a little bit you can just scrub it down or you can wipe it down with a with the with your sponge now take a look at the screw here if and it's common you can get that dried varnished oil down in the threads and that's why I bring along my metal detail brush just in case I want to work work on the screw a little bit okay and then when as the part is clean then I will rinse it good and I'll lay it on the towel just with the pieces all together, like in little piles, you know, to keep it separate. Okay? Now, when I have smaller amount of parts like that, what I've been doing is got this little plastic tray, and I've been taking the little groups of parts and using this tray there's a little tiny screws from the tube pin. And here's a couple more little screws. And I'll kind of group them on here. And uh, there's a little screw. There's a couple of longer screws. Here's the uh, thumb nut. Presser foot. I don't even have to stack them this close. A couple more screws. Um, this is the oop, oil guard where the wire goes over the upper arm shaft, and it's pretty, it's pretty mucky inside. I might just put that in the strainer. I have the bed plate thumb screw and the cloth washer, and I'm I'm going to spray that too with crud cutter get that clean and I got my hand uh, stop motion release knob and the little clutch washer which is pretty mucky I think I'll do that in the strainer and the little stop motion stop set screw I'll put that near there here's my 
a throat plate. So I'll put that here, and here's the two little screws that go with it. Okay. So let me move around here. Okay, I got my two real dirty parts here, lots of grease build up on them. So I'll just use my strainer and uh, give them a little shot. I'll put them over with the bed plate. And then I'm going to carefully, yay, I'm going to carefully lift this, all my little separated parts. And I'm going to give them a good spray. I like this little tray. I think it came with, we bought some frozen shrimp or something. But my wife saved it for me, and sure enough, it comes, it comes in real handy. So I'll give them a little spray, and that's a little contained area. And they can actually, you know, even soak in it a little bit. And then, while I'm doing that, I'm going to look at this now. It's got all the loose stuff off, but there is definitely some build up of black stuff here so I'll go ahead and give that a quick scrub uh -huh. taking it right off and the back side of this it's got a lot of uh, built up grease so let see if I can scrub it off with the nylon the toothbrush and then, uh, oh, it's even, there's even a lot more on this side. Let me see if this will do it. Now, on this, I would take the wire brush. It's a sturdy enough, you know, piece of metal. But even the toothbrush, after a short time with the crud cutter, it's, it's breaking up. Might spray a little bit more and double check it. Uh-huh. Yep, right around the little studs there. What I call the stop studs because that's what the stop motion stop set screw stops against when you turn it left. When you turn the knob left. Okay. Now, let's uh, take a look at the back of that hand wheel because that's where that um, clamp washer is back there and it, somebody had put grease in here and on the shaft and uh, I usually just put a little oil because you, you screw it on it doesn't you know once you put it on you screw it on so I put a little oil with that PTFE so the next time I want to take it off it's not varnished and stuck on there but I don't, I don't know. Maybe they used to put grease at the factory. I don't know. That's looking good. I, since this has like a built, <coughs> excuse me, built up parts, I would probably give that a going over. And uh, make sure I got that clean and maybe a good spray. Keep that with the screws that came with it. My little felt uh, washer. Ooh, look at that. Wow. Yeah, that was mucky. I think I'll do that again. I've also cleaned these with just a couple drops of like laundry detergent. And that works pretty good too. So you don't 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 put a smelly washer back on your clean bed plate right okay I think that's got it one thing about that ultrasonic is uh, I'm, I'm trying to gather up a full set of the original attachments for this machine because when I sell them I like to have as complete an attachment set of the original as I can and once I get them all and I kind of test them and make sure that they're still good, then I love putting them in the ultrason ultrasonic cleaner 
because all those little spots on the swivel you know it they just come out like new but like I said for years I didn't have that and uh, this cleaning method works very well okay so I'm gonna make a little room here and uh, I'm gonna bring up that tray because if I run oops if I run water now um, you know I'll disturb all the parts and I may lose track of which little screw goes with what I'll just let them soak a little more and I'm gonna rinse off these that, that uh, clamp washer and the oil guard and take a look at them and make sure that I that they're clean just start laying them out then I'll go ahead and rinse this and she can go with that clamp washer you can go that area a little more and there's that little stop motion stop set screw So that's a little grouping. I rinse off my throat plate or needle plate. Now well, you're, you're getting the idea. I'll rinse these off and I'll come back just to show you that bed plate. Okay, I got everything rinsed and, and laid out here to start drying. And like I said, kind of grouped in uh, you know the sections that they go to. So I'm going to do one last uh, work over of the bed plate drip. Still pretty nasty coming out of there. So I'm going to take that card cutter water from my small parts. And go ahead and use that, and then. Uh, I'm going to give it a, another rinse and you know I have I have had to do this on a couple of machines like five times before the water ran clear but the, the felt or fiber itself was in really good condition if somebody had just over maintained I mean when they put oil down there it's like they were using a cup full at a time or something so it just took a lot of rinsing and then spraying the crud cutter and rinsing but this is this is running clear so I'm doing real good on getting all the uh, the old stuff out oh see how that came up a little bit did you see that well I don't want to lift it because it's easy to tear but I hope you I hope you will trust me that when you lay it down and let it dry it'll just flatten right back out I just like to get around the edges and underneath real good to try and be sure I get all of the soap out there's still a little bit of bubbles And I usually just use, you know, like cold water. Maybe it would work faster or do better with, with warm water. I don't know what adhesive. There's a little bit of adhesive on these. And then it's kind of tucked around the edges. And I don't, I've never ruined it. So I think I'll just keep doing it with cold water. <laughs> Now this, this is going to have had crud cutter on it uh, for quite a while. And 
when you rinse it off and dry it, if you see it's a little um, not as shiny or you've got some streaks or something like that, don't, don't worry about that because when we do the cleaner wax, that's why we do the cleaner wax. That gets all of that old stuff off of there. I'll set that up like that for a while. And then I'll clean my tray. Nah, I'll do that later. While I'm drying the parts, I stand it up like this to let it drain some more. But, uh, you know, it's Arizona, so I put it outside under cover of the patio and just let it dry. And maybe tonight or tomorrow morning when I go out to have coffee, it'll be dry and it'll be flat. But when, when I lay it out to, to dry, lay it flat. And then all the wrinkles and bubbles will flatten right out. Now, let's take a look at these parts here. And I brought my hair dryer and get plugged in here. And I should have done that before. Sorry. Okay. Um, so I want to start drying the the parts. And I think I'll start with the hand wheel. And uh, I, I, usually, I usually use a lower air and a warm uh, setting. Low air pressure. And uh, there's nothing on here that's going to rust, so I'm not worried about it necessarily being bone dry, like on some of the steel screws and stuff. And if you get little, you know, like here, we're in, the, we're at the desert, we're at the bottom. So that sweet Rocky Mountain water that goes into the Colorado River, and we get some in the Arizona Canal, and we mix it with a few a couple of our local rivers and then we have well water and it's real minerally so it's not uncommon to have little mineral deposits and stuff from the water but that comes right off with the with the cleaner wax so that's what I'm going to do drying um, all this stuff with the same thing and I do like to get the steel stuff that's not chromed I like to get it very dry and I'll just put it back here I'll put it back in there so I don't lose it so you're getting the idea it, it only takes a minute <clears throat> Excuse me, it only takes a minute or two and then they get nice and dry. So I'm gonna I'm gonna walk the bed plate outside, lay it down, then I'm gonna finish drying all this stuff and then just hang in for a minute or so because I I wanna take this stuff back to the bench and show you something, okay? So be right back. Okay, back at my little dinky work table here. Hey, you remember Coco? Mm. She's feeling good. She's she spent some time basking in her cleanliness. She's starting to remember what it's like to be so clean. And that's only the first lubrication and moisturizing. Wait till we do it some more and clean her up when we're done and wax her. Woo! She's gonna like that. But in the meantime, 
I wanted to show you on these uh, man, on these uh, parts that I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and sit down. Yeah, I'm not gonna make it. Okay, that I want to put a coating on oil of most of them, and it is the same uh, principle as with um, cocoa. You know, we stripped all the grease and oil off of her, so we gave her a light uh, oiling, uh, pretty good oiling and greasing of the gears. So it's the same uh, thing. This is the motor hold down bracket, and you'll see it doesn't look oily and greasy. It looks kind of weird, a little streaky maybe, and it doesn't look too good. But I'll just take one of my oil brushes. And I'm going to cover it with oil, just like that. And then, while I'm doing this, it gives me a chance to inspect the part under better lighting and see, did I miss a little rusty spot or a, a dirty spot? Now's the time to, you know, to do any spot cleaning. Or if you got a, a little a spot of rust, take that uh, must for rust or your favorite rust remover and treat it right now and then put the oil on so this just takes a few minutes you know I usually have a uh, radio on or maybe the news in the background I like to do that sometimes in the evening and uh, then I'll do the same with the screw that holds that bracket. Just a nice little light coating of oil. And wear, wear your gloves if you want. And uh, you know, you'll be surprised. Some of these pieces, the oil kind of soaks in. And some it won't. And then later, we'll just take our oil rag and we'll just... Now see, this is a painted metal. But if if the edges have worn, you can have little pieces of rust. So I still go ahead and uh, brush it down. And then like I said, when we go to use it, if it's all oily, we'll wipe all that off. That, that's not a big deal. And remember, in some some of the, especially the older service manuals, in the care section, they talked about, you know, hey, if, if you're not going to be using your machine for a while or stuff like that, to, to take a lint brush and drip oil all over it and wipe the all the metal parts of the machine. So, here's my other little group of screws and uh, get a nice little coating. I haven't seen any rust at all and uh, I'm, not, I, I'm not worried about that. Now here's my uh, thumb screw for the presser foot. I do that. It's chrome. Oil really can't soak into chrome you know but in the little swivel area just gonna give it a light coat and uh, give it a little little protection lets me look at the piece good see did I did I really get it clean does it look malformed you know if I notice something's broken uh, I gotta order a new one someplace or a, or a vintage one, and so the sooner I find it, the better. Okay. So you're getting the idea about that, right? <clears throat> Just get a nice light coating. You've got them all dry; they're all clean. You got them separated. Yes, I do the top of the needle plate. And I'll wipe it off later. And uh, just go through and do all the all the parts and screws and make sure that they're uh, that they've done well. 
you know. And I won't make you watch me do all of that. Now, I'm changing my storyboard on this series because I'm starting to get emails from people asking that uh, I do adjustments and stuff in the series. And really, I was just going to do the series, like take a few things off, get her all cleaned up, oiled, greased, put it back together, waxed, woo, you know, there you go. There's your shorter rehabilitation series versus a restoration, in my opinion. But uh, I think to honor some of those requests, I'm going to change this series. And uh, I've had some emails about the feed regulator. I had a very nice email about if I was going to be doing uh, feed guard or uh, feed dog adjustment for height and positioning. I had one where uh, it's a fellow and anytime he turns the knob down below to throw the feet out so that he can uh, like darn and stuff, something in here is hitting. Bang, 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 bang. And he doesn't know what to do. And uh, you know I had several like how do I adjust the needle bar height? How do I adjust the presser bar height? Uh, what are you going to do with that tension since it's not complete? You know, some stuff like that. They maybe don't want to break down their machine all the way, but they sure want it to, to look good and work nice. So, I uh, the next part was going to be, you know, putting this stuff back on and waxing and stuff and a final oiling, but I, I'm... It's not going to be that. <laughs> I haven't decided what's best to approach right now with the machine in this condition. And I, and I have done other videos of all that stuff on the 404 and um, 503 and some other machines. But um, I, I do my channel to try and help people. So if they say, I got this problem, could you help me? I really want to try and help. So... Um, whatever part four turns out to be, I hope you will come back and take a look at it. If it's something you already know or not interested, just say no thanks, you know, and maybe check me another time. But it might be informative, it might be fun, it might be something that you could use on your machine, uh, whether it's a 301 or not. So, thank you for tuning in for Coco Gets Her Parts Cleaned. And whatever part four is, I hope to see you back then. Take care.